Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to change styles based on data. So D3 is about visualization and presentation of data. It's likely you'll want to change the styling of elements based on that data. You can use a callback function in the style method to change the styling for different methods. A callback method for the style. What does that mean? Well, you know, a callback method is so you're, you've got your dot style, right? Style. And then you're going to have a CSS selector. So this, in this example will be like color. And then you're going to have a callback method. So you're going to have a function in here. That's what this is saying. Um, to change the styling for different elements. For example, you may want to, to color a data point blue if it has a value less than 20 and red otherwise. You can use a callback function in the style method and include the conditional logic. The fallback uh, function uses the D parameter to represent the data point. Uh, so that's just for here. You can use whatever uh, data point you want when you're writing these functions. Uh, I would actually use, I, would, I don't like saying D. I would rather say data point because then it makes your code more readable. But um, going on with the reading. The style method is not limited to setting the color. It can be used to, with other CSS properties as well. So other properties would be like font family, font weight, border, background color, anything. Um, so yeah, you, but you do want to pass it in as a string. So you're going to be color in parentheses. So we want to add the style method to the code in the editor to set the color of the H2 elements conditionally. Okay, so we want to add the style method to the code editor to set the color. So we can just, I'm going to keep the spacing here because what we're doing is chaining onto this. Um, we should just actually have this be here. So it's d3.select and then we're going to select all, then we're getting the data. And so for each data, we're entering a new one and then we're appending an H2 element and within that H2 element, there's a text that's here. And now we're saying the style of that element is going to be, well, we want to set um, the color, right? So color, and then of the H2 conditionally. Write the callback function. So now we're going to write a function. I'm going to write this out in vanilla JavaScript initially, and then we'll factor it back. So function, and then we're going to say data point. And I'm just going to expand this so our code stays on one line. And then within the data point, oops, we're going to have a um, we're going to do something so now we've got a callback function we could do whatever we want we could say console.log uh, data point and i'm pretty sure that'll log out each individual number so now we can see what's happening is it's creating this text and then with each one we're setting the color but instead of doing anything with the color we're just console logging that out so 12 31 22. so each time with whenever the data set is there we're entering with each one we're creating an h2 element and we're console logging but we don't want a console log what we want to do is write a callback function so that the data, if the data value is less than, oh, data value. So let's be more explicit. Data value. Um, data, okay. <clears throat> so if the data value is less than 20, it returns red. So here we've got true, false, false, true, false. So the first one is less than 20. So if this is true, if the data value is less than 20, then we want to return a string because we want this function to render out to a string of red. And then that's what, and so it works. This is uh, rendering this out to a color of red. And if we were to inspect this element, right click, and then I press I to get inspect, you'll see that the style is set to a color of red. Cool. And so, well, what do we want to do? Write a callback. If it if it's less than 20, it returns red. Otherwise, it returns green. So we can just say, uh, we could do this multiple ways. We could say else uh, return green. Um, and then we've get, got it working out to green there. Uh, another way we could refactor this, uh, just return green. So if it's less than 20, return red. But if it doesn't, then it's always just going to return green. So that works as well. I'm pretty sure this will pass the tests. Okay, cool. So if if works, else works, they're exactly the same result if return green. So um, yeah, this is the way to do it. This is a JavaScript, um, original vanilla JavaScript function. And so when you see up here what they're doing with this D dash, this thing, they're using uh, ES6. So let's refactor this down. Now that we know we've got the right answer, let's refactor this down to ES6. So I get rid of the function and I put a arrow function here. And you'll see it's working just the same as it was. And um, I actually don't think that you need the parentheses here if you wanted to factor it down even more. So because it's red and green, you can tell it's still working. 
And so what about this guy? Well, we could just get rid of this and then it works the same way because if it's less than 20, it returns red and otherwise it just always returns green. Um, that would work too. It's a little bit shorter. Uh, we know we have uh, conditional statements. We have ternary statements in uh, JavaScript. So instead of returning red or green, we can say, we can make this one line and we could say return uh, this guy uh, and then we say with the question mark and the colon and this will get us a ternary operator which will operate the same way and then, so this is basically like we're returning the result of this and so if the data value is less than 20 do red otherwise do green and so that's a uh, a more concise way of doing this and I think yeah we could go smaller. You could do something like set, make the variable harder to read. I, don't, I really don't like it when people do this when they're coding. And I'm pretty sure if you made this a one line thing, you wouldn't need the return. No, you do. Okay, so we're not gonna worry about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, don't want the data value to be, sh I don't like making variables small just to make it your code shorter. It makes more sense for the data value to be like that. I mean, I would even do that up here, like data value, right? Because then it's easier to read, in my opinion. This one says data value, USD. So it has an implicit return here. So it seems like we could get this down to one. Maybe if we were to just go data value green like that, and then get rid of this. Okay, so yeah, that's it on a one line. And so that's, that's factored down even more. I think that this is harder to read. I would personally like to write, if I were writing a node app with this in there, I would, uh, yeah, write it like that. I think this is pretty clear. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's a bunch of ways to do this one. Hope you guys enjoy this one. And we'll see you in the next lesson.